Welcome to our webinar, Developing Your Mission. I'm Marshall Shannon. I'll be your host today as we discuss how to develop your mission and mission statement. <clears throat> and as we go through this, let me review with you as we go through the ministry design portion of our webinars that we have broken the ministry design process into four steps, discovery, design, delivery, and direction. Today we're going to look at the discovery phase in part two, the second or third step in the process. The first step is to uh, determine your purpose for as a church. Now, I state that because the overall purpose of all of our lives, individually and corporately, is to glorify God. But you've got to uh, develop this within the framework of your own theology and the way that you've set your church up. But I've, I've <coughs> had my wife put together this chart for you, uh, this pyramid. Core values is on the foundation. Then mission is built on your core values. It springs out of it. And then your vision. And then your strategic plan. If you get these incorrect, you're going to have problems. <clears throat> and so your core values are your priorities. We just finished our fourth one-hour webinar on discovering and developing and delivering <coughs> and defending your core values. It is foundational to your ministry that you identify and develop <coughs> and make certain that you're carrying out your ministry based on the core values that you have developed in your, in your heart, in your core of your person, of your corporation. With a mission, you're looking at your purpose. With a vision, you're looking at your potential. What do you see your ministry becoming? And then your strategic plan is your process. How are you going to carry out your vision or carry out your mission, your purpose, in order to fulfill your vision, your potential, all the while uh, not violating but following or carrying out, living out your core values? Our core values are the things that we feel are priorities and what we feel are the most important things. They drive our actions, whether we've identified them or not. So let me start <coughs> with step three, mission development. In the definitions, we're going to look at these following things. We're going to define what a mission is in a mission statement. We're going to define or describe what a mission statement is. <coughs> What it determines, it is, it is powerful. Just as core values are powerful, your mission is powerful, and it should do certain things for your ministry. And then development. How do you develop a mission statement? How do you communicate it, and how do you defend it? How do you preserve it? So as we go through all of these in this webinar, that you would have an overview of how to develop your mission, your calling as a church. So what is a mission? A mission has been defined as a mandate. It's something that you're giving marching orders, a directive, <coughs> a commission. We, we call Matthew and Luke and Mark's ja, uh, words to us, Christ's words to us, as the Great Commission. In Matthew 22, it, uh, he gives us both <coughs> not only the Great Commission in Matthew 28, but in Matthew 22, the Great Commandment. So we want to fulfill the Great Commission to make disciples all over the globe, and we want to do it in the spirit of the Great Commandment, loving God and loving others as we <coughs> love ourselves. It's been defined as your charge, your orders, your calling and purpose, that we would understand what our we're, we're called to, to fulfill a mission. God's given us a mission. You've heard guys talk about what's your mission statement. They're wanting you to define <coughs> your mission in one statement. So what is a mission statement? It is a general statement about who you wish to connect with and what you hope to accomplish. It may answer the following questions. Why do we exist as a church? What are we to be doing? And who are we to be reaching or connecting with? 
it should be scriptural if if our core values are directing our action because we've determined that certain things are important it will cause us to say to take certain steps or to act or conduct ourselves to behave our, ourselves in a certain way well if we're going to fulfill Christ's words to us the great commission it had better be our our mission had better be scriptural it had better be short we know that you can expound on and on and on in writing and from the pulpit about the, the mission of the church by talking about all the functions and forms, the way that you carry out, the methods you carry out the Great Commission. But the mission statement itself should be brief. It should be short. Uh, some guys have said it should fit on a t-shirt. <clears throat> Why? Well, people will read your mission statement. And they'll know and understand as they get to know your church family and the way that your ministry is designed that it involves much more. So it's like cracking open something and finding out what's inside of it. Well, to begin with, all you can see is the outside until you crack it open. And so your mission statement should be something that is easily seen and understood. It should be based out of God's heart, out of his person. It should be short and brief so that they can understand it and they can remember it. It should be comprehensive. Uh, it, it should be overarching. It should be broad. Um, <coughs> it, it is uh, s summarizing everything about your mission in a statement. So it, it's got to be concise and clear it needs to be uh, short, brief, but broad enough so that people can understand what the mission is. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Back in the, the late 1800s and early 1900s, when uh, the train industry, the locomotive industry, carrying both people and freight, had been put from coast to coast, that it... Uh, was then <clears throat> approached about the idea of individual, individual trains, cars, automobiles, vehicles. And they said, no, we're in the train business, and they didn't bother to go use their resources or step into the automobile business. And so you had the Henry Fords and the Chevrolets and the Buicks and the others that came in <clears throat> and created the automobile and developed it and did uh, assembly line and what <clears throat> the railroad companies did not really understand was that they were not just in the train business they were in the transportation business and so they kind of missed their calling and now you know trains are not nearly as heavily uh, involved in the country as transportation, semi-trucks hauling uh, cargo, buses hauling people. And so your, your mission statement better get at the core of why do you exist? What are you supposed to be doing? Who are you supposed to be helping or connecting with or serving or reaching? <clears throat> Describing your mission, <clears throat> what should a mission do? If you're going to describe what your mission should do as a church, what's it going to look like? Well, first off, <clears throat> it should provide clear direction, a clear purpose, so that everyone can understand what they are to be doing and <clears throat> where they're to be aiming. Biblical examples of this, Adam and Eve were told in Genesis 1.28, to be fruitful and multiplied, to subdue the world and dominate it, to rule it. Moses was told to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Joshua was told to finish the, the occupation of the land. King David, David was told to shepherd and be a prince to the people of Israel. Nehemiah was told to build a wall, but he was building the wall, not for the wall's sake, but for the people's sake, 
<clears throat> to solve a problem. So they're no longer what he was going to solve with uh, derision. He was going to solve a problem. Paul talks about in Romans 15 verse 20 that he was going to go preach where no one else had preached, lest he build on another's foundation. He wanted to go. It was giving clear direction as to where he was go, where he was to go when he understood his mission. Christ came to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark ten forty five. Secondly, it should determine what really matters. What really matters? What are you supposed to be doing? What functions do we exist to do? What is the primary task God has called you to do and called you to accomplish? What is your, your, your job, your intent, your task? What are you trying to achieve? What are you all about? Depending on how you come away from this, as you filter this information through your mind and heart and your experience, and through the framework of your theology, your doctrine, you've got to be able to clearly explain to a congregation in a community what your church, why is it there? We know it's a nonprofit organization. We know that it's supposed to preach the gospel. But why is it there? Give them something to rally around so they have clear marching orders a clear mission, a clear calling, a clear mandate and commission, a clear purpose. Next, it should provide a decision-making framework. A clear mission, when you fully understand what your mission is, you will be able <coughs> excuse me, to identify what your mission is not. And so it provides boundaries. What will you do to fulfill your mission, and what will you not do to fulfill your mission? Because if you haven't already had it happen, you're likely going to have people who come with ministry ideas, and they want to ask you to incorporate it. They see a need. They want to meet the need. They ask their church to meet the need, and you have to be able to say, well, that will get us off mission. And so it provides a framework or boundaries that will let you know why you exist, and how that is fleshed out. It's a compass, if you would. <clears throat> it's a, it's, a compass is a decision heading you uh, um, in, a, in the right direction, or you get off course. So determining your mission is very important that it be, <clears throat> while comprehensive and broad, that it be very, very direct and simple to understand so that you then got to go and figure out how, what methods are you going to use to fulfill your mission. And those methods change, by the way, as the marketplace or as your community changes, as the culture around you changes. What worked in 1980 and 1990 and 2000 may not be working in 2010 and 2020. Next thing, it should unite your congregation. It should develop unity and harmony. Ephesians 4.3 talks about the duty to, to produce or to create and maintain unity. Everyone is to be rowing in the same direction and in the same time sequence. They're to be synchronized together. Other people, if they don't agree with your mission, you, you need to make it easy for them to disembark, to get off your boat. But while they're on there, Everybody ought to pick up an oar and ought to, everybody ought to be rowing or some part in servicing your church and using the metaphor of a boat that, you, that you're rowing together on a mission. You've got a destination and you know where you're going and what direction you're going and how you're going to get there. Next, it should energize your congregation. It should energize them. They should be inspired. They should be working together. It ought to allow them to increase their productivity. So they ought to be energized by it because they know what their mission is, and they charge off to it. 
to defeat the enemy, to reach lost people, to minister to them in a certain way, to carry it out, whatever your um, mission is, as you flesh out how Christ wants you as a church family to make disciples, that you talk about it. But it's go it should increase your productivity because you now, now you know what you're doing. It should help you measure your performance. So it's a, it ought to produce a framework for measuring your effectiveness and your efficiency. How well, what are you producing? And it ought to increase it, but it ought to help you measure the quantity and the quality of your uh, efforts, of your ministry. You need to have a well-defined, clear, concise, comprehensive mission that states how you guys or what you guys are going to do as a church. Developing your mission statement. How do you create one? All right, we decided our mission is this, but how do we put it into words? How do we make it short, <laughs> brief, concise, and yet comprehensive, broad enough that it encompasses what we're doing as a church? Well, first, you might start off with your existing statement, if you have one, and you, you adjust it, you adapt it, you reshape it, redesign it, you renovate it, remodel it, <coughs> so that it is fresher. And again, understand this, that your generation of church family, it will do them good to go through this exercise of creating or restating your mission statement in their own language with their own emphasis so they can make it theirs. Something that was designed in 1953 may have grown old and stale or insignificant or archaic in its language, the way that it's stated. And your 20s and 30s and 40-year-olds are looking at this and they're, they're, it's not resonating with them. It's not relevant to them. They haven't had any part in, in creating it and stating it. So you can start with the one you've got and redo it. Secondly, you can start from scratch and craft one. It can be pretty hard to do, but it's necessary. Remember, the foundation of your mission statement is thoroughly understanding, correctly understanding your value systems, your value statements, your core values. What is, what is important and priority that is driving the way you do ministry will give you some direction about what your mission should be and how it's going to be carried out and where your ministry is going, how it's going to fulfill whatever God's vision is for your ministry. <clears throat> Thirdly, you can adopt one from another ministry. And so you can adopt it, and then you can adopt one from another ministry and adjust it. So you can adjust yours, <clears throat> you can adjust one that you saw the wording and you think it captures the calling that God has given to your congregation and you can adapt and adjust it to, to fit, to make it yours. So it's like altering a, a set of a suit or a set of clothes that the fabric and the size is about right but it needs to be tailored and, and so it fits you just right. Now to help you, let me give you some sample mission statements. Some of these are, are, are meet all the requirements, and some of them may not. Can you identify them? But this is to, to help you. So I've collected these from, from different sources, all right, from, and you, we'll put them on the website so <coughs> you, can, you can see them. But the different books and sources that you can go read, and <coughs> some of these samples are mine, or I've collected them from churches that I've been dealing with particularly over the last 10 years, um, or I pulled them from somebody else's experience with the churches. Uh, here's one that I like, but it doesn't mean it fits you. If you and I were playing uh, baseball together, softball together, well, I'm a good-sized guy, and my hitting style is power. Uh, I'm an old guy now, so there's not much power there, but <coughs> I'm past my prime. But the bat I used might be completely different. It's still a bat, but it's a different bat than you might use when you go to the plate. That's why there's all these different sizes, shapes, weights, composites of, of 
softball, aluminum bats. Well, here's mine. To, to, to make fully devoted and develop followers of Christ. All right. Now, there's a lot more to it that, that, that uh, is birthed out of this statement, but that's a starting statement. To introduce people to Jesus Christ, to help them grow to be more like him, and then to reproduce the process in others. Well, you can't probably get that on a t-shirt, <clears throat> but it's stating people, and you want to help them grow. <coughs> you want to introduce them, you know, so forth. Here's another. To, <clears throat> we exist to welcome people to faith, equip people with faith that works in real life, and send us into service into the world in Jesus' name. Here's another one. We are called to make disciples for Jesus Christ. If you're going to boil uh, the Great Commission of Matthew 28 down, is it going to be to make disciples? Well, you've got to side that doctrinally, theologically, with your own exegesis of scriptures. You interpret what it means and communicate it to your leaders and your church family, how you guys are going to boil down what you're called to do. If it's scriptural, and it better be, this is a simple statement. <clears throat> Here's another one. To bring people to salvation in Jesus Christ and establish them as disciples of Christ who are faithful in what, <clears throat> in, or who are faithful to do what is in his heart and mind. So obedience. Our church exists that all people may know his love, grow as his disciples, and share their faith. We help others experience the joy of of Christ. Our mission is to make disciples that know, love, and serve Christ and reproduce this in others. Our mission is transforming individuals into empowered disciples of Christ. Our mission is to worship God, make disciples, and serve the world. Our mission is to go to all people groups and make them disciples of Christ. We gather as God's people, grow in faith, love, and service, and go into the world as disciples. Our mission is to make and mature believers at home and abroad. <clears throat> Our mission is to know Christ and to make him known. Well, that's, that's a very old statement, meaning churches used it 50 years ago. Making him know, knowing him and making him known. Our mission is to present Christ as Savior and pursue Christ as Lord. Our mission is to follow and make, make followers of Christ. Our mission is to help our community find real life in Christ. Our mission is to provide the best opportunity for people to become fully devoted and developed followers of Christ. Our mission is to lead ordinary people to extraordinary life in Christ. Our mission is to lead people into a life-changing relationship with Christ. So, those, those are just some examples that I pulled together while preparing this webinar. And there probably are gazillions more. So, how do you communicate your mission statement? You have developed it. You maybe have... Uh, pulled together groups of people, your leadership, <clears throat> and you've worked to develop this and you're building your ministry design, your core values, and now your mission. Following this will be uh, webinars on vision and visioneering. And then strategic planning flows out of this. How are you going to carry out your mission through understanding your values to fulfill your mission so you can reach your vision, fulfill your vision, <clears throat> That's what your strategic plan does. So you're, you're going to tell people about your mission statement. You want to make them aware of it. So you've got to determine what should be communicated about your mission statement. What are you going to tell them? Are you going to show them um, like uh, someone who's made a, made a dessert, made a cake, for instance? Are you going to feed them the cake and show them the flavor of it, let them taste it, see it, taste it, and feel it, the texture of it? And, and feel it going down the throat? Are you going to tell them everything you had to went to the store, you bought the ingredients, you made it from scratch, and you, you used all of this, and these are the steps that you made it? I mean, what, what are you going to communicate here? Are you going to back it with Scripture? 
You going to tell stories? You going to give personal testimonies of people who were a part of, of creating and selecting your mission statement? Are you going to have the church uh, approve it? I mean, what's what should be communicated? Every church who goes through this has got to decide that. You've got to decide where should it be communicated. I mean, is it <clears throat> going to be in family sessions, small groups? If you've got Bible study for your children and teens and adults, if you are doing it in your worship service, are, <clears throat> are you going to have uh, a webinar like this where you, you present it uh, to people? using one uh, tool or another, a service or another, and get your people in small groups that way? Are you going to use the bulletin, social media? Are you going to use a newsletter? Are you going to go door-to-door -door and talk to your church family in their homes? Where, where are you going to communicate your mission statement? When should it be communicated? How are you going to unveil it? Who should communicate it? Is it just the the senior pastor or the executive pastor? Is it <clears throat> part of your pastoral staff, associates and assistants or support staff or your lay leaders? Are you going to bring in consultants to communicate it? Who, who is going to communicate it? How should it be communicated? How often should it be communicated? Are you to keep your church on focus on mission, how often do you have to remind them of the purpose of the church, your mandate and your commission, your calling, you, <clears throat> the orders you've been given, the charge you've been given? However you're describing within your own framework as the architect of your ministry, how often are you going to communicate it? Is it going to be in your bulletin every Sunday? Is it going to be <clears throat> on uh, your sign out front? Are you going to have shirts you give away with it printed on it? Is it going to be in, in all your information packet given out to your guest each week? Are you going to have them recite it as a part of it? And I've seen it done all these different ways. So how often are you going to communicate it? Then why should it be communicated? Well, if you want to stay on mission, uh, you know, you You've got to continually remind people and ingrain in them. And the average person may have to hear you say this five, different, five to seven different ways and, and then over, I don't know how many times, over and over and over again. And, and it can take uh, three to five months of you, until you're just sick of saying it. But remember, you're living in it. You're, you're buying the ingredients. You've made the cake, and now you're serving it to them, and you're just tired of cake. But they're not. And so, you know, their whole life is not there at church 50 to 60 hours a week or more. They've got their jobs and their families and their, their activities they're doing and on and on you go. And so you need to communicate it to keep people on mission. To Listen, you've got to lead people and convince them through every way that you communicate, preaching, teaching, training fellowship, person to person, standing talking over the fence at home to your neighbor who may attend your church, getting people to, to talk about it in every way. It, it should energize them. It should give them clarity of focus. It should help them narrow down how they're living and what they're doing because you're, you're trying to shed every weight that keeps you from fulfilling your God-given mission. So you ought to be passionate about it, ought to rally the troops. You ought to display it in every way that you can so that people can see it. And so, you know, what is next here? You've, you've developed it. You've, you've displayed it. You're delivering it. Now you're seeking to defend it. So what's next? Well, we're to stay on mission. Stay on mission. So let me give you just a three-point outline. Number one, clearly define your mission and break it down into its components so that you've got some general goals and methodology for carrying out your mission. <clears throat> then you're going to have to, as you develop your methods for your mission, and I'm kind of helping you look down the road here, you're going to develop methods for fulfilling your mission. And then you've got to delegate money. So the very practical part is you need to understand very clearly what your mission is and what it is not. Then you need to decide 
and develop what methods are you going to use to carry out your mission. And then you've got to delegate and manage the money. So in a very practical way, once you have the mission statement and it's been defined, then you've got to talk about how can you how are you going to fulfill this? And then you've got to you've got to fund it. I'm Marshall Shannon, your ministry design coach with ministry design training. And our company is Ministry Design Concepts. You can reach me at this address or at either one of these phone numbers. And I trust the Lord will richly bless your efforts to uh, obey the Lord's calling on your ministry so you can fulfill it. Thank you again for attending our webinar on developing your mission.